Hello everyone. Welcome back to Analog Snippets. Couple of years ago, I made this video on the interview tips for entry level analog engineer position. So now I thought that it is a time to take it a step further. So in this video, I'll give some interview tips to more experienced analog engineers. Most of these tips are derived from my own over a decade of experience of interviewing analog engineers. I think over the years I have taken more than 50 interviews, if not 100, over four companies. Although some of these interviews I have taken alone, but most of the interviews were taken with my other colleagues. As a result, these tips are not only my own experiences, but also based on how other people conduct the interviews. Obviously, I have also been on the other side of the table and given several interviews. And a few times I have not even been selected. And believe me, failure can teach you a lot. Okay, few notes on the nature of analog interview. All analog interviews and moreover interviewers are different. One of my manager who was himself a digital guy was often frustrated by this. Often in the same interview, one person would like the candidate very much and other not at all. The interview styles can also be very different. Some people will just stick to fundamentals and basics of analog design. On the other extreme, some people will strictly stick to the CV. They will ask questions only what is written in your resume. But most people like me will cover both grounds. And most of the time you need to excel in both departments, the analog basics and whatever work experience you have. Okay, let's start with some do's and don'ts about the resume. Your CV is your first opportunity to make the impression. Make sure that it is well structured and there are no spelling mistakes. The format should be consistent and it should be easy on eyes to read. Avoid flashy graphics and complicated formatting. You know, most analog engineers like simplicity. Don't make your CV too short or too long. I usually find that four pages are enough to put everything important without losing too much or without giving too much information. It's good to have papers and patents mentioned in your CV if you have them because it gives you a certain amount of credibility. But most people don't put too much weightage on that. Put your most important experience on the first page and make it easy to find by making it bold or underlined. The most relevant experience for the job you are applying must be on the first page or at most at second page. If there is some work experience on which you have worked a long time ago and you are not too keen to answer questions on that, make the timeline very clear on your resume. If you have worked on something 10 years ago, then people will understand if you are not very up to date on that. It's very important that you do not lie on your resume. If you have not worked on something, don't just put it on your CV to make it more impressive. Analog design is a small world and people know people who know you. At the same time, if you have not worked on it and you are questioned on it and you are not able to answer it, it makes a very bad impression. I personally think it's okay to leave out some topics on which you have worked, but you're not very confident on. But ultimately the bottom line is, however good is your CV, it's no guarantee that you will get the job. So let's now move to the interview. Broadly speaking, I divide the interview questions into one of the four categories. Usually an interview starts with non-technical questions. The first question usually is to introduce yourself and tell about your professional experience. Now, before answering this question, keep in mind that the interviewers have already read your resume. So don't spend too long repeating it all over again. So keep it crisp to the point and highlighting the things you want to highlight. Usually you should sum it up in four or five minutes. The next question is more important. These days companies are very sensitive about why you are leaving the current company or why you want to join their company. You should avoid criticizing your current company. People don't like cribbers much. Valid reason could be you want to move city because of the family or health reasons or you want to explore a new domain or take new responsibilities or even you are in a company for 15 years and now you want a change. Make sure you have a genuine and believable reason. 
If you have been changing companies quite often of late, it is likely to make people a lot suspicious. So make sure you have a valid and convincing reasons. Another important question for experienced people is what is the role you are expecting in the new company? Do you want to be individual contributor or expect to lead a team? Do you want to work in core analog circuits or want to lead IPs or chip? Do you want a non-customer facing role or a customer facing role? And so on and so forth. If you have a strong preference, then it's good to make it very clear. But if not, then you can say that you are open to any kind of role as long as it is challenging. If you are getting interviewed for a leadership role, then make sure that you think about the challenges you face and how you handle them. The next category of questions are core analog questions. As you gain experience, your analog expertise diverges. But there are a common sets of concepts and fundamentals that every analog engineer is supposed to know. And as I said before, many interviewers like to spend most of their time in this category. Some of these core fundamental topics are mismatch and noise in current mirrors and diff pairs. You absolutely need to know how you minimize mismatch and noise in the mirrors and the diff pairs. Concepts of negative feedback and frequency compensation. Aspects of two-stage amplifiers like gain, offset, noise, etc. Humble RLC circuits. Concepts of offset and noise in a multi-stage circuit. Open bit circuit, for example, inverting and non-inverting amplifiers, their performance in terms of offset, noise, gain error, etc. Questions are seldomly straight. They are often twisted in some way or other. It is very difficult to prepare for this category of questions. Questions are tricky, unique, idiosyncratic, and very difficult to predict. The best advice I can give is stick to the basic and work through the problem logically. As they say, trust your training. But at the same time, do prepare for this category. You don't want to make fool of yourself by forgetting the basic concepts. So at least spend few days revising the concepts, going through the books or videos. I have several videos on fundamental topics on my channel. Okay, the third category. My third category is fundamental concepts in your specific domain. Every domain of analog circuit design has some core concepts. Some examples are concepts of sampling and aliasing in data converters. Concepts related to phase noise and jitter in PLLs. Concepts of inductor current waveforms in power converters. Pole zero movements with the load in the LDOs. Offset cancellation or low noise concepts in the precision circuits. And so on and so forth. This category should be easier than the previous one because you have worked in this domain and you know what to expect. And most people are able to answer the questions when things are in normal mode of operation. The more difficult part of the questions are when things are not in standard configuration. I'll give you some examples from the domain of power converters, which is my core domain. And let's say we are asking about boost converters. So we start by asking the basics of boost converter. And most of the candidates who have experience in this domain can describe it very well. But then we start to meddle with the configuration. For example, what if this diode is short from the beginning and you are trying to start, what would happen? Or for that matter, this inductor or this capacitor is short or open. And a lot of candidates struggle in these questions. And we do expect that because these questions are supposed to throw you off the track. And we want to see how you approach these kind of questions. Are you still able to think logically and clearly? Or you start forgetting your basics? But if you have really worked in your domain well enough, you will be able to answer these questions. But I would recommend you still refresh your memories of all these basic concepts. Okay, my final category. The questions that are based on your resume. And this should be an easy category. You should be able to draw the basic conceptual diagram of the circuits you worked on or describe the challenges you faced and how you solved them. 
You should be able to remember the main specifications of the design, such as input-output voltages and load currents of the LDOs, or frequency of operation, or quiescent current, etc. My only advice is that spend some time recollecting these details and going over the things that you did. Okay, finally, I want to give you some tips in helping you prepare for the interview. Experienced analog engineers are supposed to know things intuitively. So you should be able to analyze circuits without writing equations. So unless you are explicitly asked to write the equations, avoid it. Second thing is that if you have not worked on something, don't try to answer it confidently. But if you still want to answer the question, just say that you haven't worked on it, but you want to give it a try. If you are not certain about any question, it's better to say it and then make educated guesses. Again, trust your training and don't make fool of yourself. My third advice is to not be adamant and start arguing on any question. If a question is being asked again and again, then chances are that either you are not replying it correctly or they want to hear something more. At that point, probably you can ask to clarify the question a little more. Another important advice is to prepare some questions that you want to ask them. Well, not in the sense of interrogating them, but questions like what are the company culture or group culture, what kind of projects are being done, or what kind of blocks you will be assigned if you are selected, or clarify things like work from home or remote working. You should come across as curious and eager to join the company. Now, it may not look like that important, but it does make an impression. My final advice is try to arrange a mock interview session. You may ask a trusted friend or colleague for help, or you may be able to find a professional who would do it for a fee. Do prepare for your interview, at least for a couple of weeks, because if nothing else, it does put you in a proper mindset. And with that, I wish you a very best for your upcoming interview. So post your comments below and thanks for watching.